sexual abuse of a child exploits and degrades them. It can cause serious damage to social, emotional, and cognitive development of a child. Sexual abuse affects one in four girls and one in six boys before the age 18. Hi, my name is Zanetta Berryman Cooper, founder of Speak Out Now. Speak Out's goal is to spread awareness of child sexual abuse and rape. We provide resources for victims, their families, and help with the overall healing process. For more information, please like and visit our Facebook page, Speak Out 203, or call 203-936-9396. Custom designer slides by Roy Religious Jones. Non fur is thirty dollars. Fur and bow tie slides thirty five dollars. You get the slides, your custom design, all mailed to you. It's a deposit of half the total to get started, and the rest when they're finished and ready to be mailed. We use Cash App or PayPal for transactions. We also need your size and what would you like on the slides. Be the envy of your neighborhood and show off your slides. Don't forget, spring is coming. Show off them feet with the new custom designer slides by Rory Religious Jones. We need you to check this out. For more information, inbox Rory Religious Jones on Facebook.com. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired All this bullshit on the radio, I can't buy it I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired Hey yo, rap ain't food no more, I'm on a diet word I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired All this bullshit on the radio, I can't buy it, son I'm sick What's going on, y'all? What's going on? Um, uh, he's here He's here in the building Everybody do me a favor, give it up for the man of the hour, the man of the hour today, Mario Boone's in the building, y'all, Mario Boone's in the building. How you doing, sir? I'm doing well. <laughs> well you smiling. You're smiling already, huh? Uh, yeah, I didn't expect all that, but I'm doing good. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, you are, yeah, you, you, you definitely got to give you all that. Again, thank you for coming. I know you're, I know you. you're busy. You just on like... TV like 15 minutes ago. Yeah, yeah. And you shot over here, got rushed, over here. Rushed straight here. Didn't even have time to go eat yet. So. Oh, nah, <laughs> you <make> me, <laughs> let, me, let me hit myself with the uh, with the button. You know, where's the? <laughs> let me hit the button. You know, I mean, I don't want to make you. I didn't know you didn't eat. I I asked you, I, ladies and gentlemen. I asked him if he wanted anything. You did. He you was did. like, I'm simple. Yeah, just I am. just I'm, just I, put me on the mic. Let's let's do what we do and let and let's get it cracking. Yeah. Um. Now. Before we, I see, I, I didn't notice that before. I didn't know they was that. Those are the gazelles. Well, these actually are not the, uh, <laughs> this is not the on-air pair of glasses. I wear. The on-air pairs is, 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 is I, a lot of noise being made about the on-air pair. I, I, I get, uh, that's probably one of the top questions I get asked about uh, all the time, almost every day. I get emails, people call me, I get stopped on the street. They either love them or they hate them, but they, they ain't they, going they, nowhere. They mine, so. They will tell you if they hate them? Oh, yeah. People have come up to me and, tell, and told me they don't like them. Flat out. Now, I, I got a lot of inboxes. It says on your Twitter, um, HBCU grad, HBCU grad, fashion and style influencer. Now, when you yes. get dressed for the show on Channel 8, uh -huh. do you guys have a stylist? No. Uh, I do. I dress myself. You dress yourself? I do. Yeah. Everything is you? Everything is me. The hat, the whole... Now, the hat is the... Uh, that's is that like taking it back? I, I don't know. It's just my thing. You know, I'm I, I'm bald, so <laughs> you know I like wearing hats for that reason. Okay. Um, and it's pretty cold up here, so you know. And I came from Florida, so down there I like to keep the sun off my head. Uh -huh. You know, so uh, I'm just used to wearing hats in the summertime, keep the sun away. In the wintertime, keep the cold away. You know. Okay, so it's pretty simple. It's pretty simple pretty for me. You know, the hat really is not about making a fashion statement for me. It's about. When I get sixty and seventy, I don't want to be old, uh, wrinkled, and you know, sunburned from from sun. So <laughs> right, I, I right, wear right. a hat every day. That's, right, no that's, doubt. That's it for me. Now, briefly, tell us who Mario Boone is. Well, um, it's Mario. People up north, oh, Mario. Yes, but it's a. I don't get mad about that because it's a northern thing. People up north right. say Mario. I'm from down south. We say Mario. You're from the Carolinas, right? From North Carolina, correct? Okay. I grew up in Durham. Uh, Atlanta is my second home, and I've lived all over the country in this job, as you know, as a reporter. 
uh, part of that job means you have to move around a lot. So I've lived all over Texas, South Carolina, uh, all over North Carolina, Alabama, Florida, you name it. I've been there. You've I've been lived, there. Yeah. And reporting. Philadelphia. Now, is it safe to say you do um, investigative reporting or news? So I'm glad you asked that question because people, <laughs> people make the mistake and they call me an investigative reporter. My official title is news reporter. News reporter. Uh, I'm what they call a general assignment reporter. That means I cover everything. It just so happens that most of the stories I focus on have an investigative bend to them because okay. that's just what I'm good at. But my official title is general assignment reporter. General assignment reporter. Yes, but people often make the mistake of uh, investigative reporter, and, and I don't. I correct them not that I'm trying to be arrogant, but just because I don't want to give people the wrong impression and make them think I'm trying to uh, fraudulently uh, inflate my resume. That's not. That's not, That's not who you are. Exactly. So I, I correct people only for that reason. Now, is this particular... Now, being here in New Haven, most when most people see you, they see you... Excuse me, miss. Can we talk to you for a minute? Mario Boone, is, is that... Is that uh, sometimes. Not all the time. Not all the time. Uh, usually when I have to go full steam like that is somebody who's been ducking and dodging. So I have to run up on them, guns blazing. <laughs> I shouldn't use that uh, expression. I, we go in hot. With the mic ro camera rolling, mic turned on. So the cameraman is right behind you. Yes. Uh, and I've had to do that a number of times. Oftentimes when people call me, uh, I'm sorry, when I call people up, you know, I don't know, uh, maybe they don't think it, you know, it's legit. I don't know what they think. And, and so sometimes people, you know, they try to BS their way through it and they don't think it's real until I show up at the door, you know. And then it's real. And then it's real. Yeah. Now yes. your edu educational background is you went to historical historical black college. I did. I went to Clark Atlanta. I graduated from Clark Atlanta University, which is in Atlanta. No, absolutely. It's, it's in uh, it's what we call the Atlanta University Center. It's a historic uh, complex conglomeration of uh, black colleges, which includes Morris Brown College. Uh, Spelman College, Morehouse College, the International uh, Interdenominational Theological Center is part of it, and Clark Atlanta University. Now, theological meaning? It's a seminary school. That's part okay, of it. okay, yeah. okay. That, that's not affiliated with CAU, but it's part of the larger Atlanta University Center. And this right here, media, is your passion? Yes, this is what I went to school for. Uh, I was what they call a broadcast journalism major in, uh, in school, and uh, I knew... Way back in high school, I knew this is what I wanted to do. You knew it, this is exactly what you wanted to I do? I knew it, yeah. I knew now, <laughs> do, you, do you ever get threats? Uh, only once. Uh, one time I lived in uh, Asheville, North Carolina, and I was threatened. Actually, on scene of a story, I was threatened, and the cops had to come out and respond. But uh, I, I, no, not not since then, and that's been probably seven or eight years ago when okay. that, when that happened. I'm not threatened, uh, and hopefully, knock on wood, that doesn't change. Right. Uh, and typically, I'm not. You know, I, I grew up in the hood. I grew up in Section Eight housing. I've seen a lot. Uh, I'm not easily uh, frightened. And that's not being cocky. That's no, just... it's not being cocky. It's just how I grew up. You know, I, I'm not typically afraid. Right. Um, you know, it is what it is. I'm no, I'm one of those kind of reporters. When you tell me you don't want to talk to me, uh, usually that's the end of it. Now, if it, it sometimes it goes beyond that, meaning I have to show up at your house or your job or track you down somewhere on the street. Right. Usually, those people are people in uh, political office, for example. Right. They're, okay. These are not private citizens that I would normally have to. They track don't want to talk. So I mean. They, these are people who I have to track down typically are, are politicians, government folks. Those people, when they say, I don't want to talk to you, and then I have to go out and find them. Right. Typically, if it's a private citizen and they don't want to talk, we leave them alone. Okay. So so I'm not afraid of people threatening me because I, I just treat people how I want to be treated. I'm, I'm respectful of folks and, um, you know, just hope people understand I'm just doing my job. Right. You know. So the answer to your question is no. I, I'm not threatened since that incident seven or eight years ago, and uh, I'm 
typically not afraid doing my job. Now, I, there, I do have some colleagues who are afraid to go in certain parts of the city, you know, and because they didn't grow up like I grew up. Right. And so they don't have the same experiences, life experiences right. I right. have. Right. And I respect them for that. I understand that. But um, I, 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 I'll just go. I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't matter. I'll just go because I'm just not afraid. Uh, I, I'm, I'm one of those people send me into the most – the scariest place in town and I'll just roll up in there. And you know? you're there. I'm there. Okay. I'm okay. not afraid of my people or any people for that matter. Oh, so, okay. We, we're going to get to that. We're yeah. going to get to that in a minute. <laughs> you're not afraid of your people. I'm not afraid of my people. No, now, I respect my people and my people. I think for the most part, they respect me. They respect you. And that's all it is. As long as there's a level of respect established, um, we're all good. Now, when you, when you, I know that we spoke on the phone and can you explain to the people how this you don't you don't do the story yourself and put it on social media or create it's 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 a process. It's a process. So I do the story, but before the story gets done, there are several layers of how that happens. And even after the story is done, there's more layers of checks and balances and approvals. So let me give you an example. Today, I did a story today about uh uh, this tenant at an apartment complex in New Haven who uh, alleges that her landlord is a slumlord. Okay, I saw that. Now, it just so happened that this landlord turned out to be the mayor's son. I did not know that until... You, oh, really? I didn't know. I, I've never met the guy, so I didn't know that was her son. Until we did some more digging and, uh, and checking records and stuff down at the LCI at the City Hall, we discovered, oh, this is the Mayor Harp's son. That put a whole different spin on the story, only in in that we went the extra mile to double check, triple check, and make sure that every single detail in the story is correct. Uh, there, there's no issue with it, because when you're doing a story about somebody who's high profile, um, chances are greater that it, something could go wrong. It could blow up. We right. don't ever want to have that happen. Now, mistakes are made, but we don't like for mistakes to be made. So when we realized who we were dealing with in this case, there were extra eyes that were put on the story just to make sure. And I welcome that, by the way, because that helps to ensure I'm doing my job, I'm getting the information right, and there's no issue. So there were extra layers of managerial approval put on that story. So that's the process I'm talking about. Right. Um, so let me give you another example. I decide I want to do a story about potholes, for example. I come in, we have a morning meeting. I tell the producers and the managers, here's my story idea. It's about potholes. I have X, Y, and Z lined up to talk to. Here's the information I have. Here's the documentation I have to prove that the story is legitimate. Here's who I'm talking to from the city to find out what they're doing about it. They then look at all that information and say, yeah, we like this story. Go ahead and do it. Or they say, you know, this story is missing some elements. You need to come back to the table and fill in these gaps before we give you the approval to do it. Oh. Or they'll say, you know what? No, we don't like that story. The viewer is probably not feeling it. Why don't you try to find something else? Or we got this idea for you. Go work on this. Okay. So the final approval lies with the producers and the managers. Most of the time, they like my story, so they say, "Yeah, go ahead. It's a great idea. Go work on it." So, it, going through all that—that's that's to say from like a legal process. Um, not necessarily because of a legal aspect. Because I mean, we're doing our due diligence with any story in terms of checking the facts, making sure it's accurate, making sure that we're not, you know, slandering anybody or doing a story that is libelous to anybody. The the that process I just described to you with the managers and the producers checking over it. It's it's really to make sure it's in keeping with our brand, one. Right. Two, to make sure that all the facts and all the elements are there. Uh, three, to make sure that you know I'm doing my due diligence and my job as a reporter, that I'm going out and I'm checking to get both sides, making sure we have a balanced and fair story. Um, all that's part of the, the editorial process. Okay. So that's how a story becomes a story. Right. And then there are some things that are just kind of a no-brainer. You know, if a, if a child, for example teenager got shot out here on your street well the news is going to show up right. anytime a child gets hurt gets shot injured car crash we're going to be there because right. children everybody cares about kids right you know right. so uh those kinds of stories is just a no-brainer we're going to do it it's just a matter of who does it and how it gets told how the story gets told now i got we, we talked on the phone and i know that uh you had we had uh 
talked about this. When you see someone say something like, you're targeting people of color. <laughs> now, again, you I mean, I know that, that that's probably happened. It's been said, yeah. It's been said. And I guess, I don't know if it's because, do you think that's because you're a black man? I don't know. And, and honestly, I haven't really lost a whole lot of sleep over it. I think it's ridiculous. Right. Uh, it, it makes absolutely no sense. And anybody who knows me, you know, I'm one of those people, uh, to my core, I'm an activist. And I think that's one of the reasons why I do this job. Because being a reporter is about being an activist. It's about being a voice for people who don't have a voice. Um, so anyone who knows me knows that such a idea is preposterous. It's ridiculous. So I don't right. lose a lot of sleep over people who make comments like that because it just doesn't make any sense. Right. Now, I, I know that it... it I saw that you made a, a post about all the stories you, you've done. I did. And you go you you get it and you go after it, pretty much. No matter what color they are. Absolutely. I okay. don't I don't do a story based on what what race a person is. That right. that does not matter to me at all. Um now, do I want to see my people on T V in handcuffs and in, you know, mug shots? Absolutely not. I don't. Does it hurt me when I have to do stories like that? Yes, it does. It bothers me. But do I shy away from those kind of stories because there happen to be black people involved? No, because I'm not responsible for what somebody does if they decide they want to go rob, you know, the Metro PCS store or they want to go shoot somebody. That's not me doing that. Right. So I'm not, you know, feeling guilty because Pookie and Ray Ray want to go out and act stupid and I got to be the reporter who comes and does the story. I'm going to do my job. You right. know. And you said it does bother you. It, of course it does. Because, again, I don't want to see us on TV acting that way. Right. That's one of the reasons why when you see me on TV, I'm always trying to look the best that I can look. It's not about a fashion statement for me. It's about making sure that we're uplifted and we look and we're represented in a way that we can all be proud of. Right. So it doesn't I don't think it makes us proud when we see Pookie and Ray Ray on the news acting a fool. Right. I would imagine that. People from other races and backgrounds probably feel the same way when they see people who look like them doing crazy stuff. I I, I just assume. I mean, I don't know. But, you know, again, I, you got to remember, I grew up in the hood right? where, you know, if you came in the house and my grandma, she was watching the news and you touched the TV, she probably would throw yeah, something at you. My mom's. You know, so we grew I grew up watching people who look like me on the news doing crazy stuff. That it didn't feel good then, it doesn't feel good now. But right. this just happens to be my job that I have to tell those stories. And wow. I'm gonna do it, no matter who the person is. Yeah, everybody in the comments. So people like, at home who let me just say this, people at home who like to accuse me of uh going after black people, first of all, it's a very small number of people who say that ridiculous comment. Right. But y'all just might as well get used to it. I'm not gonna stop doing my job because y'all think I'm targeting <laughs> black people. It's it's crazy. Right. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, I really had to laugh at it because it's just so dumb of an idea. Yeah, well, I think that I, I think that kind of that's what kind of sells. Like, oh, you know, they see a black man, he's well dressed, reporting the news immediately. Why are you doing this to us? And right, that's, I mean, that's what the, the the narrative would be like. Right, but that but the the truth of the matter is, you, you people, you, y'all just have to face it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it to y'all, to us. I'm right. not doing that to us. It, and so I don't accept responsibility for that. I'm sorry. Right. I'm going to do my job. And your job, which is your career. Absolutely. You're going to do what you do. Because let me tell you why that argument is so ridiculous to me. Because I, I know people who say, you know, the blue wall of silence should be broken down. And they want cops to tell on each other. Right. You know, and expose bad cops. They want the good cops to speak up when bad cops do bad things. And they should. Right. Now, what kind of person would I be? If I ignored when we do bad stuff, but then I want to put the bad cops on TV when they do bad things. See, to me, that's a that is a hypocrite to me. Right. You're OK with, you know, championing, uh, exposing cops who behave badly and use excessive force. But when Pookie and Ray Ray do stupid stuff, you don't want them to be exposed. Like, okay. see, these are the people who will sit at home. They know who's selling drugs and shooting people on the block, but they don't want to say anything. They'd rather live around violence and drug dealing so they don't have to face the fact or, or they don't want to be called a snitch. 
Right. But then they want the cops to snitch on each other when they do bad stuff. I don't understand that. You can't have it both ways. Okay. That's very hypocritical to me. Okay, we got it. You want to take this phone call? Let's take it. We're going to take this phone call. It's the Raw Report. Talk to us. Yes, I got a question for Mr. Coon. See, we starting off on a bad premise already. So I'm not going to answer that question already. You, I'm not going to talk to this guy. Um, why is it? I, I'm not going to. I'm not talking to you, sir. He, <laughs> Listen, he, we already we already established that if somebody calls in and gets a little crazy, he doesn't want to even have and, a conversation. I, I'm happy. Listen, I'm happy to answer that man's question. Now, did, you, that, did that bother you? No, it doesn't bother me. I just think it's childish. It's, right. it's childish. You're calling up to ask me a question, but you start off by insulting me. Right. I mean, what sense? To, who does that? <laughs> and you think I'm going to engage you in a conversation? <laughs> no. See, my grandmother told me a long time ago, you don't argue with fools because people from a distance don't know who is who. <laughs> so why would I Why would I try to have a conversation with somebody who's starting off the question with an insult? Right. Okay. Not going to do it. So, you know, next caller. <laughs> yeah, please call in, yo. 917-843-0258. Mario Boone's in the house. Um, Now... Does that person, is that possible? They didn't even hear nothing you just said? Probably not. And and those kind of people, you're not you're not going to change any of his opinion. And, okay. and I'm, I'm not here to change his mind. I'm here to educate, try to explain how the process works in terms of how news is covered, what, how a story becomes a story. Um, so a person like that, their mind is made up. So why, why even? No matter what you say. No, there's nothing I can say that's going to change how they feel. Okay, okay. People, T Tania Edwards, she was like, I'm so glad he's hanging up. Well, we, 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 um, I'm sure that I'll get, um, some nasty comments later. I'm used to it now. Yeah. I mean, because you, I've we established in. that. Yeah. I, and I asked him people before he came on, I was like, the phone rings and the phone could get nasty. He was like, I got thick skin. Let's do it. Yeah. And I'm, listen, I'm willing to face criticism. That's part of this job. Right. I, and I, you that, do face it. I, I do face it every day. And I mean, that's what I sign up for when I do this job. Criticism comes along with it. And I'm I'm not backing away from it, but I don't have to accept being insulted and disrespected. I don't sign up for that and I'm not going to tolerate it. Okay. I understand. Y'all can call in 917-843-0258. I think they might be a little nervous to call in because it's, it's all good. They, they usually see you on television. Yeah. And they usually see you running down on somebody. That's such a strong yeah, way that, to that describe kind of, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, because I don't, I don't run down on people. Uh, we call them up. We ask them if they want to talk. If we don't get them on the phone, it's my job. It's my. I have to do my due diligence to go try to find these people because we have to give them their say. We have to give. We have to get their side of the story. You see what I'm saying? Right. So really, it's not running down on them. It's trying to give them an opportunity to have their side heard before. It, Before the story goes on the air, because what happens is it'll go on the air and in, in, in without their version, and then they call me up complaining that you didn't try to reach out to me or you didn't give me a chance. So I'm giving them their chance. Have you ever seen a story that you didn't want to do? Of course, that happens all the time. Really? There, I'm assigned to do stories that I don't necessarily agree with or like, but I don't have a choice. Right. It's, it's my see. I want somebody out there who has a job. They can go to work and tell the boss, I'm not doing this today. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. I want to meet that person. And I right. want to know how long you've had a job where you can do that. You Like literally, boss man, I ain't doing it today. I'm sorry. Or you know what? I don't like that uh, that assignment. I'm not going to do it. And not get fired. And not get fired. This, where does that happen? So when, 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 my, when the people I work for tell me, go cover this story, now I can express you know what, I don't agree with that or I don't think we should do it this way. That's part of what we call the editorial conversation. Okay. But in, at the end of the day, when my boss decides it's got to be done a certain way, I have to do it. And, I, and I'm and i okay with that because that's part of the job. That's any job. Right. Go ahead, caller. Hey, Ron, this is College Girl. Hey, College Girl, what's going on? Hello. Hi, Mario. Hi, how are you? Uh, I'm sorry, wait, how do you pronounce it? It's Mario. You had it right. Okay. Hi, Mario. How you doing? I, I have a two-part question. One question doesn't, um, it doesn't go with the other. However, I just want to say first and foremost, I do appreciate the reporting that you do. I do follow your Facebook page and I Thank you. share whatever um, you post, especially if it interests me. Thank you. Um, and my first question goes as far as the incident that just recently happened with, I believe it was um, one of the fire department 
workers overdosing. Right. Um, I've been in multiple conversations with a couple of different people, and they were feeling some type of way towards you just off the sh- just off the shrimp that the person that overdosed um, picture wasn't originally posted. However, right. somebody else's picture were. Correct. And they felt as though you didn't post the person's picture who overdosed due to the fact that they were Caucasian. Right. How do you respond to, how do you respond to that? Okay. Do you want to, you want me to answer that now? You want to give your second question too, or you want to no, hold on? No, you can answer that question. Okay. Please. So, um, First and, first and foremost, that was not a decision I made. That, that's one of those it, situations where I don't get a say in terms of how that goes down. That's why we have people above me who make that decision. Now, let me explain how that unfolded without revealing uh, internal secrets, if you will, for lack of a better right. word. Mm-hmm. So, yes, I knew who the firefighter was when the incident first happened. I got the tip. I knew the day of who he was. I had his picture, I had his name, I had all that information. Um, but my boss made the decision that the name was going to be withheld. Now, I strongly objected to that, and I uh-huh. voiced my objection to it. But it, in the end of, at the end of the day, it wasn't my decision. I had to do what I was told if I wanted, right. to, if I wanted to continue to have a job. Now, my boss told me, we sat down and we had a meeting about it, and my boss told me, you know what, Mario, if you want, you know, you can put it on me. Just blame me for it. And I thought about that. And I said, you know what, blame, I don't think blame is the correct word because blame insinuates that you did something wrong. My oh. boss explained to me why she made that decision. And it was because this particular firefighter had not been arrested. The fire department had not officially released his name. And so she wanted to hold back until such time as the fire department officially released his name or he had been charged criminally that has not happened yet so that is why she made that decision and i respect her decision and so i don't blame her for making that decision and i support her for it because my boss sits and she looks at things through a wider lens she has to look at the big picture of of these situations and she made the decision that she felt was best under these particular circumstances also, what people don't know is the first firefighter who we did identify back in May, I believe, Jarrett Pullen, who happens to be black. She was not the manager in charge at that time. It was a okay. different manager in charge at that time who made the decision to release that person's name. Two different people, two different management styles, two different ways of handling a similar situation. So I get how it looks from the outside that we were somehow protecting this white guy. That's not what it was. And I told my boss that. I said, you know, it looks, even to me, it looks like, you know, we're trying to, you know, give this guy more deference than we gave to the other person. I don't like this. And again, we sat down and we walked through it. We talked through it. And the the final decision was we're going to hold his name for now. We'll revisit it, and at some point, we expect to put the name out. So it wasn't anything uh, that people tried to make it out to be. There was no kind of, uh, you know, trying to protect this guy. I'm the last person to want to do that. I'm completely the most liberal person when it comes to stuff like that. But I also have to understand that, you know, we're dealing with a guy who hasn't gone to jail yet. He is trying to probably trying to get his life together, maybe even about to lose his job. So you got to also take all those things into account. We're all human beings. You got a guy who's dealing with some serious stuff right now in his life. And right. one of the questions that my boss asked me, what does it do? How does it serve the greater public to put his name on front street at this moment? And, and, and so again, there was this back and forth of, of discussion in terms of how that was handled. And ultimately it was handled in a professional way in terms of me having to respect the directive of my superiors and doing what I was told. And if the role was reversed or the situation was reversed today to be played back over again, I would do the same thing again. I would give my opinion and state my case. And if my boss said, no, we're going to do it this way. Guess what? I'm doing it that way because that's my boss and I have to listen to my boss. And that's understandable. That that is understandable. However, Again, you do have to see how it would look to. You I know. I understand. I totally listen. I completely understand how it looks to people, but 
I also understand people are looking at it that way without having all the information I have. Right. You get what I'm saying? So all I can do is say to you that from my perspective, there was no effort to try and protect this guy and shield his identity. And mm -hmm. if you look online, ultimately his identity came out anyway. Right. So it, there was no effort on our behalf to try and protect this firefighter. And I can almost guarantee there will be another story where his name will be revealed officially. I can almost guarantee that. Okay. Well, thanks for the info. Um, the second part of my, well, the second question I had was, what advice do you give um, the up and coming people that's looking to possibly be in the position that you're in? Well, I would say first and foremost, um, go to school because you, you, you definitely need to um, go to college and try to get the, you know, get the education that you need to get the educational foundation to come into news. And then I would encourage people, especially people of color, to, you know, get into the news business. We need more journalists of color. We need more black reporters, more people behind the camera um, in management positions in, in a newsroom. So, yes, please. Um, if, if news is your thing, if you like TV, if you like working in uh, fast paced environments and, you know, deadline driven environments, if you like working in a job where it's never the same, you know, two days back to back are never the same, then I would encourage you to, uh, you know, to consider a career in journalism and call me up at the TV station. If you want to come down and take a look around and go on a tour, I would be happy. Bring your kids down. You know, we give tours at the TV station all the time. Um, I wish I saw more people of color coming in and take advantage of that. Uh, so I would invite you, if you have children, bring them down. Let's show them around the TV station and let them see what it's like to work inside right, I'll definitely be in contact. I didn't know that service was available. Yeah, absolutely. I'll definitely utilize it. Yeah. But all right, those are my two questions. Thank you, Rob. All okay, right, thanks, take Carlos, care. girl. Take care. Thanks for calling. No problem. All right. Bye. Bye. So that you... I, I, that was going to be a question anyway, but yeah, she beat I, me to it. I knew that was going to come up because I've I've taken a lot of heat for that. Uh, I've gotten a lot of emails from people who uh, who were upset with how that was handled. So I completely understand, um, you know. And again, it, it just have to keep reiterating: it wasn't a decision I made, but I have to respect the decision, and I stand by my boss and her decision. I don't think she did it out of any kind of malicious intent. She made a call that she felt like was the best you know, for the news product, for the, for the station. And I have to respect that. And I do respect it. Right. And you made a good point when you, like what, um, Oh, Monique Moss wants to know what's the number to come, come down to the news station. She was a young lady that has been harassing me. Oh, ever okay. since, you, uh, <laughs> you, buzzer. Ever since she's been, you, you were coming on. She's been, she hit me early and was like, Oh, is he coming? What time? Get home. And we're going to grab this call right quick. Okay. And I'll give out the number. All right. Hello. Hi, I'm calling to talk to Mario. Yes. Hello. Hi, Mario. How are you? Hi. How are you? I'm fine. Great. Hello? What's up? Is there feedback? No, I can, I can hear you. Oh, we're good. So, now, I have a question. Mm -hmm. No, not really so much of a question, because I see that you have posted something about Matthew Hart. Yes. So. I did that story know, today. I'm sorry? I did that story today. Excellent. I've been a tenant of, Mar of Matthew Hart for, since I want to say, since what, 2002. Okay. That man has been a slumlord <laughs> since his father left. And oh. if you predate back to when he took control of his properties, it's going nothing but downhill from them hiring people that steal them telling us and setting so many rules and regulations. They put a fence up, locked us in our apartment complex to the point that the state had to come and take the locks off the con uh, off of the off of the um, fences. We had a concrete step fall on kids. I'm wow. all for <laughs> exposing Matthew Hart because it's just ridiculous that we pay this man rent money and he don't fix nothing in none of the apartments. Wow. Uh, well, I, I'm sorry you're having to go through that. And uh, if you're dealing with a situation right now, I would encourage you to reach out to LCI. Uh, I've gotten to know the folks at LCI quite well because I've done stories about other apartment complexes in town with similar complaints. So, 
you know, document, document everything. And if you're not getting any help with LCI, give us a call at the station and I'll take a look at it for you. <laughs> Funny you say that because we just recently got over an infestation problem with oh, wow. um, suit, um, drain bugs, drain flies. And um, they said that the drain flies that came from sewage that was backed up for years and it took LCI about three months to come out here and figure out what they were going to do. But even when we called um, LCI, me and my um, neighbors, once we mentioned who the landlord was, they were reluctant on coming out and helping us. Really? Wow. And it took for us to threaten to call you guys for LCI to even come out. Well, a lot of times uh, <laughs> a threat to the news will get... Uh get people moving in the right direction so uh i would just encourage you you know if you have any issues with your complex in the future and you don't feel like you're getting the help that you deserve give us a call and we'll we'll definitely take a look at it for you oh absolutely i i, I guess that's why the maintenance people must have been around the property today because they haven't been here in months <laughs> <laughs> thank you for lighting that flame that's all we do want to say is thank you uh great excellent well thank you very much for calling Thank you, bye. All right, bye. take care. So I think we um that's uh and I had a has a I fire. thought you had tough questions for me, Rob. I I you know what? I'm I'm shocked that these people haven't <laughs> called in and hit you because somebody just said the young girl to call in college girl. They said, "Yo, you're going easy on him." I think that it might be maybe because they don't want you <laughs> they don't want you to show up at their house. <laughs> Excuse me, miss. You want to talk to me? Because, I mean, I'm sure you've gotten a lot of doors slammed in your face. All the time. People, uh, usually they either go the other way or they hang up on me or they close the door. So that, I'm used to that. Okay. Now, is it, and you said there's stories that you didn't want to do. Uh, oh, yeah. So, yeah, we were talking about that. Um, it's just like, how can I compare it? Like, let's just say you're a server and it's closing at the end of the night. Right. And your assignment is to clean the bathrooms. So who wants to clean the bathrooms? You right. Know, but that's part of your assignment for that day. Right. right you know right, what I'm right, saying? Right, so right. sometimes news reporting is like that. Sometimes it could be, you know, a kid getting shot. I don't want to go do a story about a kid getting shot. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Those stories are depressing, but it has to be done. And I can't say, you know, I don't feel like doing that today. No, I have to go do it. Now, good question that came out of the comments. Do you feel that you're under a microscope? Absolutely. Absolutely. You, I, you, I didn't even have to finish the question? Yeah, well, no, I am. You're under a microscope by people that you interview and... By everybody. By everybody. Yes. Because of your color. Uh, I don't know if that's why, but I can only guess. But I, I will say, because of the types of stories I do, when you do stories where you're investigating people, particularly people in uh, high positions and you know positions of authority and elected officials... People are waiting for you to make a mistake. They're waiting. So, yes. Okay. Because now they can go, aha, he's biased or he's, right. he's, he's out to get me. He's unfair. He's making it up. He's embellishing it. You know, things that, will, that they do to try and discredit you because they, they can't stand on any facts. So, you know, they'll throw out, just make up stuff and throw things out to try and tarnish your image or discredit you. So, yes, people are waiting for slip ups. And that's why we work. So and not just me, but I think in the journalism profession now in general, especially with a lot of the rhetoric coming out of the White House, there's a really strong emphasis on getting it right. And we make mistakes like any other profession. We don't like it when it happens. When we when we find that we've made a mistake, we acknowledge it, we apologize, we fix it, and we try to move forward, you know, maintaining the public trust. But people are waiting for that aha moment to happen so they can say, gotcha, you know. And we have to work, I have to work twice as hard to make sure that doesn't happen. Right. And they want you know. to know, will you get any flack for being up here? We covered all that. Oh, I mean, we covered it. I don't know. Yeah, no, I don't think because we. I hope not. But if it does, you know, I'll, just when I first, it, I'll deal with it. Yeah, you know? when I first reached out to you, you was like, well, let me. I ran it through. So for people at home, if they want to know, we I ran this through my bosses at, at the station and they gave me approval to come here. We don't just, I can't just go show up at, uh, you know. 94.3 and do an interview i have to ask you, you have know. to get okay i have to get permission it's like any other job uh you know i don't know 
I'm trying to think of an actor, Taraji. Right. Taraji's a big superstar. But before she goes and does press for Empire, I'm sure she has to run it through publicists, clear it with the Lee Daniels people from Fox and all right. those folks. So you don't just come show up here and do an interview. Yes, my people at the station approved it, and uh, I'm here. Now you, now we talked in the phone. And let me also point out I'm that sorry. people, as I as I shared with you, Rob, people reached out to me and encouraged me not to come on the that's show. That's what I was going. That's <laughs> what I was going next. They, re- they reached out and said not to come on they the did. Report. Okay. Yes, they told me not okay. to come here because it could har- it be- could be harmful to my career, and um, I-, I had made a commitment to come here, and I was intending to uh, fulfill that commitment. And you did. We called. We spoke on the phone. Yeah. And you said you got several messages yes. and call- phone calls. That's true. Not to come here. Absolutely. Okay. I-, I was I was getting ready to go there next, people, but somebody people reached out to him and told him not to come. Why I don't know. Now, did the show did start out raunchy? Yeah, and but that turned that was a year ago. Okay, so I don't know if they just didn't want you to come because you're a celebrity. You're a. Super- I'm not a celebrity, but <laughs> you're a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I got I did get some other questions from the females. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm about to disappoint somebody, but okay. Okay, okay. Let's let's grab this call and we're gonna find out. What the relationship status is. <laughs> Raw Report, talk to us. Hey, what's going on, Robbie Rob? What's going on? Hey, man, I see you got Mario up there. <laughs> okay. Hey, listen, I was just calling because I want to let you know that Mario, he's a good news reporter. Okay. And sometimes when I'm hanging out with a young lady, we watch Mario do his thing. <laughs> And I swear, one day when I was kissing on this young thing, she was looking at the news instead of looking at me. <laughs> so Mario, thanks a lot for holding me down. Yo. <laughs> thank you for, thank you, brother. <laughs> I don't know what that. That's what, he calls up here a lot. Okay, okay. I, I usually throw his music on, but I don't. I, yo, now a few females did reach out to me. I see that grin you got on your face right now. <laughs> they wanted to know, because um, in your Twitter status, it says you break hearts. Now, what is your status thus far? Just in case a young lady wanted to come down to the station, treat you to a cup of coffee, maybe some lunch, some Starbucks or something, or maybe some... So I, I don't know if people are going to be shocked to hear this. I don't know why they would, because my life is an open book. Okay. But I'm gay. Okay. <laughs> so I'm sorry to disappoint the ladies. Okay. Ladies. ladies. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ah, ladies. <laughs> Get know, out of my damn I know inbox. this is going to blow up uh, Facebook, but, you know, it's 2018. Right. People are gay in 2018. Yeah. And definitely. they're open about it. I'm not in the closet. So, yeah. Okay. Now, did, did did anybody know this prior? I don't know. I mean, it's not. I don't walk around saying, hi, I'm Mario. I'm gay. You know, <laughs> I'm just. Because that's. I, that's only a small part of who I am. I'm, 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 I'm. You see me, you see a black man first before anything. Right. I'm that. Right. And that's just kind of how I look at it. But, oh, you know, the, the I, wow faces. I came out. Yeah. Well, it's true. It's, it, yeah. I came out when I was in college. I was probably twenty years old. You don't. You don't have no problem. No, I don't care. I mean, what? What can? Who? What, who can say something right, to me right, because right, I'm gay? Right. What can they do to me? You know. Right. 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 I'm not gonna not live my life because people don't. Like that I'm gay. I don't care about that. Right, 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 right. I'm I'm who I am and I'm proud of who I am. I right. Have no issues. I'm good. Okay. 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 So yeah, that's that's it. Okay, to the seven no, let me see. Eight ladies that reached out to me and said, Ask Mario what's good. Nothing's good. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's good. And no this I mean, it is what it is. And I mean, whatever. So, so Jody said, "Wow, never would have seen that coming." You had a hope. Soon as the flyer went up, bow. It was. It was. In I the- mean, I don't try to. I, I really don't try to act like I'm anything but what I am. So, I mean, I'm not. Somebody I'm said, not like over the rainbow. So maybe that's why. Said, why is it always the sexy guys? Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even gonna say nothing. I didn't ask for it, yo. I, this is how I was born. I don't have no control over. They showing love though. He said, "Live your life." Thank you. Now, college is pretty much. Do you miss? Do you miss those days? I do. I miss Atlanta a lot. Um, 
It's way too cold in Connecticut. <laughs> way too cold. But you're here. I'm here. I mean, I'm, I I got to deal with it. Um, you know, right now back home is probably 75, 80 degrees. This is very cold for me. Yeah. I had to go pull the coat out early. Uh, I had to turn the heat on in October. That is to me right, that, that's right. wrong. And that's I, wrong. It's wrong that's in wrong. October to have to turn on heat. I oh, don't. I don't like it. Tashana Gripper asked a good question. She wasn't. She wasn't in an inbox inquiring. She wants to know are you in a relationship. No. 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 He, he's he's on the market. He's he's open. So wow, this is this is incredible. I I knew I knew you were coming. Okay. They had wrote you off and said, yo, you were bougie. They didn't think I was coming. They thought you were bougie. <laughs> they thought you sipped your tea with your pinky sticking out. <laughs> and <laughs> you didn't drink coffee from, from Dunkin' Donuts. You went to uh, a... Uh, um, so, well, I don't drink coffee. Okay. So, uh, and I asked you, did you want alcohol? You said you don't drink. I don't drink. Yeah. So you're, you're living a clean... Do you eat fast food like me? Uh, Panera bread. Panera bread. Yes. Let me hit you. <laughs> that real quick. <laughs> So Courtney, Courtney Sherrell, who just called in, wants to know what made you come to Connecticut. I uh, had a job opportunity, and you and I'm not one to shy away from challenges. And right. to me, this was a challenge to come here. Could I do it? Could I survive in this snowbound place? Uh, and so that's why I came. They want to know: Are you homesick, and how long will you be? I'm here? not homesick because I'm used to uh, living away from home. Um, first of all, I'm an only child. So uh, I'm used to being by myself a lot. Okay. And you know, I grew up that way. Right. Um, but I have family right across the border in New York City. I have. Do you? I'm I originally do. from New York. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I have aunts. I have one aunt and several cousins there. I have. I lived in Philadelphia. Half of my family is in Philadelphia. I have aunts and uncles in Philly and South Jersey. So if I need to get to family, I'm not that far away from them. Um, and home is only a plane right away. So I'm not. Uh, you know, homesick at all? No. Yeah, Tashana Gripper, he um, he's he's been open with us, and no, he's not open to what you got. <laughs> Get your life together. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, he's not open to what I got. Um, this is this has been interesting. So, we we've we've covered that you're not a coon, you're not a sellout to your race. No, you just report the news. I just do my job. You do your job. Yes. Yeah, I've I've talked to uh somebody wants to know, do you want children? Uh, yes and no. And so let me break that down. Uh, I grew up as an only child in a single parent home, just me and my mom. My, right. My father abandoned the family. Wow. Yep. And, um, so I want kids, but I don't want kids without a mom and a dad in a home. You get what I'm saying? Yes. Because I grew up that way and I don't, I wouldn't want to deprive my children of having a mom and a dad in a house. So that's why I say no. But on the flip side, I think uh, I would like to have kids at some point. Yeah. Yeah. At some point, Tania Edwards said you're a great catch. Um, the ladies seemed like when you said that you were gay, the shit just got crazier uh, really? with the females. Oh, they, oh, he's great. He's like, sexy. He's good looking. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Now, how long do you plan on staying in Connecticut? Oh, man, I don't know. You know, I'm like if something comes along know. in Atlanta and the money's good, you're gone. I, I wouldn't say it like that because... I work with some really talented people and I don't want yeah. them to ever think that I would abandon them. Channel 8 is a great. And when I, yeah, when I sign on to do a job, I'm fully in on the job. Okay. So I, I haven't even thought about leaving yet. You know, right. um, with that said, I, you know, you never know where God will direct you. Right. So I just go where I'm sent, you know, right. as long as I believe it's a divine plan for my life, then I'm, I'll, I'll go. Yeah, you're getting a lot. You're getting a lot of love up here. I thought they was, they didn't. I don't think they call him because I think when once the intelligence and stuff kicks in, oh, okay, that kind of redirects. They they might have thought I was gonna come in here on some ratchet well, stuff. Well, you told me that I don't. I'm not coming up here to do a, a showdown. Yeah, no. with anyone. No. Um, they want to know how old you are. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to say. I mean, I'm, you, you know. I'm not gonna tell that. I'm gonna, okay. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm, you, I'm I'm seasoned. You're seasoned. Yeah. If, okay. If they saw me without. My uh, just for men, all this would be great. Really? Yes. So you're oh, you got the okay, yes. okay. I, I did partake in the just for men yeah. on several occasions. Yeah, and I, I'm I'm open about that. I don't. I'm transparent. So right. Yeah. Right. So he does. He went to a, a HP, and you were law enforcement at one time. Yes. Just <clears> in <throat> case anyone gets cute. Now you're you're you were law enforcement. How? What? Uh, I I well, I'll just say I worked in law enforcement for four and a half years. Uh, I. 
that's how I first learned how to shoot a gun. I had never shot a gun before until I took that job. Okay. And, uh, I'm still quite proficient today. With, with with the pistol? Yes. Okay, good. That's that's good that you say that <laughs> just in case anybody's watching and they want to get cute. You're proficient. That means that you will hit center mass. Which center means, mass. Sh- that's, center how, ma- that's how we're trained to shoot center mass. Center mass. And double tap it. Boom, boom. Oh, so you're going to double tap That's it. the training. Double tap until the threat goes down. <laughs> Damn. Yes. <laughs> Oh, they're, they're trying to guess your age and everything. Um, so now going forward, do you ever? Somebody wanted to know: Have you ever known about fake news and you still did it? Absolutely not. I don't do that. No fake news. That would be completely unethical. And um, and you don't see your your, your bosses and they would your, they would never. My bosses would not allow it. First of all, they wouldn't do it. Right. Um, we don't do it at Channel Eight. Right. If it's not backed up by facts and proof and documentation, then we don't do it. It doesn't go on the air. Right. Point blank, simple. Fake news is a term that was created by our president. Right. Uh, and to, some would say, to deflect from, you know, the Mueller investigation and his uh, other issues. Right. Um, I don't even really, I don't even believe in that term, fake news. Right. Um, I just don't think that's legitimate. So, okay. But the answer to that question is no, I would not do a story or report a story that I knew to be untrue. That would be, right. that would be totally unethical. Okay. Go ahead, caller. <clears throat> How long is he planning on going on his uh, allegations about all this corruption inside the uh, city hall? Is he digging in for that information? Uh, well... I- I'm not sure if I understand your question. You want to say that one more time? Turn your device down because it's confusing you. So, can you hear me now? I got yes, you. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, I've been uh, trying to catch up on a lot of this uh, city hall corruption. Okay. Um, do you plan on continuing with that process of finding out and digging into that information for us? Well, I will follow it as far as... You know, I can. Uh, first, let me just say, I don't know if there's corruption in City Hall, and I've never said there is. Uh, some people have. I didn't a, say that you stated that. No, no, no. I'm not I'm saying, saying. I'm not saying you're saying that I'm saying that. I'm just okay. I'm stating for the record uh, because I want to be fair to City Hall and you know the administration and so forth. What I have reported are issues that people have brought up to me, and you guys at home can make your decision as to whether you feel like that's corruption or not. I, I'm not saying it is or isn't. Um, but to answer your question, yes, I will dig into whatever is uh, brought my direction. If there are facts to support it, we report it. Appreciate it. All right. No thanks, problem. Paula. So now when you, when you do something like that, can a, can a name be that big that it can shut that down? No, uh, no, no, because uh, that would be unethical. Right. Um, everybody, to me, everybody is treated the same. Um, nobody has the power to get a story shut down. What has the power to get a story shut down is if it's not true or if it's not any facts to back it up. Right. Or if it's speculation, but we have no way to prove it. Right. That's how a story gets shut down. But if I'm doing a story about Rob Davis... <laughs> and Damn. you call up to the <laughs> basically Rob Davis or anybody right. Joe, Joe Blow Davis can't call up because they happen to be Senator Davis or Representative Davis. They can't just call up and get the story shut down. Right. Go ahead, caller. What's going on? This is Bumpy. Okay, Bumpy. What's going on? Um, I got a question for Mario. Mario, how you doing? Um, quick question: Are are you aware with all the um, allegations and um, lawsuits with the department like a public works and um, other departments in the city with racial and sexual um, discrimination or the lawsuits that's been filed no I've uh, I've done a story about one case of sexual harassment that it has a pending lawsuit right now in uh, I want to say it's public works uh, involving two employees male and female uh, that is the only lawsuit that I'm aware of that involves uh, what you described as discrimination or sexual harassment, I guess, would be the 
other term. So if there's okay. uh, if there's other stuff going on, I I don't know about it. Okay. All right. If you're aware of something and you want to, you know, let me know, you can email it to me or call me. Oh, no, 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 no. I really, I mean, <laughs> no, what I was saying was I was just wondering because I am a I am a uh employee there and um it is a lot of things that's going on. Okay, let me let me let me stop work. you let me stop you one quick second because uh I don't want you to compromise your employment by talking to me over this airway. Oh uh, no, I don't have no I don't have no problem with that. Okay, I just want to be I want to be make sure that your employment is good because Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I understand. You know how that can go. I, I don't have no I tell I you what. No I tell you what, though. Why don't you call me at the station or email me anyway? You can, we can just talk. I don't have to use your name. You can remain anonymous, and let's just talk about what some of these things are going on over there. Oh, oh, no, no, that's okay. I mean, mine's is already out there. I was okay. just, I was just wondering. I was just wondering because um, at one time I wanted to speak to the news about that because it's a lot of things that's going on, and I have filed. Um, actually, I'm I'm one of the ones that have a complaint with public works okay. and um and i was wondering um because at one time i was trying to get a hold of channel 8 have we done your story and, yet um no but i know that um that y'all have some of the i was told y'all have some of the paperwork brother it sounds like you need, it sounds like you need to call me brother because we Say need it, it sounds like you need to call me we need to talk <laughs> All right. <laughs> just hit hit me up tomorrow. Let's just chat about it. Maybe we can, uh, you know, you can point me in the oh, right. Oh yeah, I, I I have no problem with it. I don't need to remain anonymous because, like I said, I'm I'm already out there. Like I'm just tired of the bullshit. And okay. to me, the administration, the city of New Haven, is not doing anything about none of the stuff that's going on. Only certain stuff that they want to bring out for their employees that they dislike. Mm -hmm. That's the only that's the only situation that they always want to talk about. But it's a lot of stuff going on there, and I, I don't have no problem with talking to you about it or whatever. All right. And I don't have no problem with being on camera with it because I'm tired of it. I'm an employee there, and, you know, saying nothing's being done about it. But right now, it's in court now. I'm just, I was just wondering, was it a time where someone, where they came to you or either you wasn't able to discuss it? I just didn't know. But I'm definitely going to give you a call, though. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, people call me up all the time and sometimes I can't talk because I'm busy and working on a story or something, but uh, you know, my cell phone number is out there for everybody to have, you know, I'll, I'll talk to anybody. It's on 24 hours. So yeah, you know, just hit me up. We can talk. All right. No problem. All right. Thanks brother. Yep. I don't want to say your name cause <laughs> Shit, I'll tell you my name. No, my no, name no, 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 yeah. no. All right. Just, just yeah. reach out to him and he'll take care of you. All right. All right, bro. You know, I'm happy. That's, uh, that's that's good that you that you that you did that now. Absolutely, because my my first priority is to make sure that you know people, no one gets fired. People, I don't want nobody to end up in a worse situation than they are. You know what I right. mean? I don't want a story that bad that I'll do anything to get it, even if it means you lose your job. You know right. What I mean? So yeah. All right. Um. I don't know if he can stay any longer. He said he, he only uh, he only told us he could stay an hour. Uh, is, it, is, it more, <laughs> is it more calls? I'll finish out the last few calls. He'll finish out the last few calls. Call whoever was trying to call in, call in, please. Now, when you when they when they come to you directly, you still have to go through a process, correct? I still go through a process, which oftentimes you know starts out with just making sure that what they're telling me is correct, because before it even gets to the stage of. You know, we're I'm pitching a story in a meeting with the bosses and the producers to decide if we're going to do it. I need to establish whether it's factual. Right. You get what I'm saying? Because it's no point in going through the legwork and then we realize, oh, there's a problem here. I do all that legwork ahead of time and then I present all Hello. the information to Hold the on, bosses. Call. They look at it and say, you know, it it when I give it to my people above me, it needs to be a complete package of info. Right. For them to make a decision about how we move forward with the story. So you call me up and say, you know, somebody stole your stole the car or something. Right. And you got video of it, but the cops ain't doing anything about it. Well, I start looking into it, call the cops up, find out what they did. Did they take a report who they talked to? Are they investigating? If I if I establish what you're telling me is true or even if it's not true, then I present that to my folks and we decide how we want to move. Right. Go ahead, caller. How you doing, Mario? What's up? Hey, um, I heard you say that you were an activist. That's my first question. Well, that's my first statement. And my question is, do you have any social media platforms or where you cover stories that 
um, you're not allowed to do on over the air? No, that would be a violation of my contract, and uh, I'm not trying to lose my job. That was a simple answer. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> he said that was simple. Okay. I don't. I don't have you, and I don't have you blocked. You should be able to call in. I mean, it was probably another call on the line. Maybe. You can, maybe this is you. Go ahead, call the raw report. Talk to us. We got Mario in the building. Okay, great. Thanks. Hi, Mario. Hi. Good um, I'm calling because I did submit a story to you some time ago related to yes, another discrimination issue, but it was with um, Yale University. Okay. And I sent you some very vital information. It was. It was legit information. I remember. And, um, I remember we talked that. a few times. Mm -hmm. You remember? Yes. So, what happened with that? There was a decision made. Uh, again, this is one of those cases where the powers that be decided that this story was not um, one that they wanted to move forward with for a number of reasons, and not to okay, say. Okay, can you give them to me? Well, I I would. I don't want to give them to you over the air, though. I think I, I don't want. To to put your business out in the street like that. I don't think that would be appropriate. But I will say that in talking over with my people about this story, see what you don't what people don't understand is um your story could be 100% legitimate and in your case I believe it is. But mm -hmm. we have to we have to look at the bigger picture of how it appeals to the broader audience because we you got to remember we're not just covering Yale University and New Haven. Channel 8 News covers practically the whole state of Connecticut. So right. we have to consider if this story is going to appeal to an audience in Cheshire or but Manchester. See, I think that's the issue. I think that's the issue with what people are saying about you. Now, I don't have any issue with you per se. Okay. I don't. You know, that's you doing your job, whatever. No feeling. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. But I think that's what the issue is with the people of New Haven have with you is because it's like because you did call yourself an activist right. not too long ago. Yeah. And so I think the residents feel like when their stories, regular people problems that we have every day and when people contact you, you know, to report the story to get it out there so it can get, you know, to the masses, mm -hmm. it's always you know, that excuse that you just gave me that, right. you know, because of the powers that be, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And we all understand that you do have a job to do. You right. do there is a chain of command. That's understand it. Right. But at what point do you go against the grain and say and say that, you know what, mm -hmm. I am an activist. I am the voice of the people. I, I'm gonna take a stand and I'm gonna, you know, right. try my best to put the information up there. Because Yes, I am one person who did submit the story about what's going on there, but it's hundreds of people who go through that same thing, mm -hmm. and people don't stand up out of fear of retaliation. Me, I don't, I don't care about that, but I feel like once you put the story out there, more people will feel more comfortable mm -hmm. to come out and express what they go through, just like the gentleman I just called. You know, he's having the same issue with this, uh, with the, with his job. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's it's becoming more and more blatant now than it has ever been. And somebody needs to report it. So let me respond before you hang up so we can have a dialogue here. So first thing I want you mm -hmm. to know is um, every story doesn't get on the air. Okay. I understand. I, I just want but I need to put that out there because a lot of people, they think that because they send me a story idea or their issue it, it, they think that just because they send that information to me, it automatically is going to go on the air. And, and that's why I've been trying to explain the process because it doesn't work that way. Um, mm -hmm. So I will say that you're one of several people who have emailed or contacted me about a story and it doesn't necessarily always make it on the air. So, but here's the flip side mm -hmm. of that. The flip side is, it doesn't always have to be a story on the news. Let me give you an example. That's what I say. It doesn't, but it has to be some. I'm just, you know, just yeah. some type of. Well, let me let me give you an example of what I mean. Get the information out. Let me let me give you an example of what I mean. Not even necessarily getting the information out. Sometimes all it takes is a phone call from Channel Eight or from Mario Boone, and people don't want to have any association with being on the news about a bad story. So they will just step in and do what they're being asked to do from whoever the person is. So uh, like apartments, for example, today's case was a, you know, one of those extreme cases, but there are times where people call us up about issues they're having with the landlord. 
where like the heat that's a perfect example the heat with the winter time is coming on people will call us up and say you know what my landlord he's not the heat's not on or he's not working i'll call up and say yeah this is mario boom from channel eight joe blow called and said he don't have no heat what's the problem well the landlord will go i'm on it we're sending somebody over there right now that's a story that doesn't have to be on the news because we solved the problem for them. You get what I'm saying? So it doesn't always end up on the news. And we don't we're yeah, not always uh, we're not always looking to put people on the news in a bad light. I'm really just Oh try- no, but I'm they really do just need to be put help. on the news in a bad way. Because the thing is when there's something going on on that campus and it involves a student that everybody's on it. But the employees and we all know that they employ over half of the city. But when employees have an issue, it's always a hush-hush thing. And it's some really bad things going on. And employees are getting treated really bad over there. And there should be some some type of coverage on it. Okay, well, I'll tell you Whether what. Whether it let be me, let me do on this. air, off air, but it should be some type of coverage on it because people are getting treated horrible. Let me do this. How about, would, would you call me again tomorrow and let me revisit your situation? Oh, I send you the data, so you got the data. I know, but I still... So it's I not still, something that I'm just pulling out the air. I, I, you're right, and I'm acknowledging okay. what you're saying, and I'm not disputing it. Uh, again, mm-hmm. I think this is a matter of a difference in how the practice and the process works. But what I'm saying to you right now is if you call me tomorrow or at your leisure, mm-hmm. I will commit to revisiting your story, taking a second look at it, and... I'm not promising that it'll be a story, but I'll take another look. And maybe now I can I convince my people to say, okay, I think it's time we do this story. Sometimes that happens yeah. and, and they change their minds. You know, so, sometimes I'll go back to my boss a week later, two weeks later and say, you know, I really think we need to take a second look at this. And they'll go, yeah, I think you're right. Let's, let's go ahead and take another look at it. So I'm not saying mm-hmm. that I'm not saying I'll jump on it and do it, but I'm also saying I'll take another look. And if there's a way to get it done, I'll commit to you to try to do that. Mm, sounds good. So call me tomorrow. Would you do that? Yeah, I could call you tomorrow. That's not a problem. I'm in at 10 a.m. And and do me a favor when you call him, right? Mm-hmm. Take take your sexy voice off and put your professional voice on. Okay? <laughs> That's how I should t- well, <laughs> All right. Thank Bye. you. All right. Bye. Now, we got, a, there was a lot of people in the comments saying that Yale is a monster and that they don't want to get touched, they don't get touched. Well, I... Listen, I was at Yale last week. Uh, there was a, uh, well, maybe it was this week. I don't. I was just at Yale. There was a uh, dorm party at uh, Durfee Hall. Okay. Where somebody allegedly spiked the punch, and a couple students were drugged. Okay. And two students had to go to the emergency room. I think I saw that. So that was Yale. I was there. You was there. I did the story. So Yale's not. Yell is not untouchable. Again, it's all about the facts. If the facts are not there, then the story doesn't get done. A lot of people call us up and they complain about discrimination and and I believe them, but I have to have proof. It can't just be my boss is discriminating me. I know it's because I'm black. And show me some proof that it's because you're black. Like uh, okay. I need to see, okay. I have to have something to back it up. It can't just be you think that is because you're black or you think it's because you're Asian or just because you're a woman. Did your boss send you an email that said, because you're a woman, I'm not going to promote you. Right. You know, did you record them on your cell phone, uh, making a sexually suggestive comment? That is proof that we can work with. Have you filed a complaint? A lot of times people hit me up and they haven't even filed a police report about stuff or they haven't made an official complaint with HR. And that has to happen first. That, all those steps have to happen before we go near discrimination stories because you know what that does it tells me you're serious first of all about the situation because nine times out of ten people are not going to waste their time going to file a fake police report or a fake hr report or fake eeoc report people who do that step typically there's something to it now young man said that story that you did went nowhere is that what story the story about the spike punch and what what does that even mean went nowhere I did the story. I, mean, I don't even understand what that means. I guess he meant it. It, it, it just it, it, it died. It like we, he, we did the story. That's it. I mean, I what else? I can't go to yell and go knocking on the dorm room doors and demand to say who spiked the punch. I can't. We. I can't even go onto Yell's property without permission, right. or I'll be arrested. So when they say the story didn't go anywhere, I'm not sure where they wanted it to go. I reported the story as the facts that we knew them to be. 
And that's that's it. Now, unless they arrest somebody, then there won't be another story about it. Or if it happens again, you know, that's how it becomes another story. If there's an update to it, if somebody gets arrested, who if they caught somebody spiking the punch, if uh, God forbid the person who was sick and got you know they died, right? Then that's an update that we'll do another story about. But the story has been done; it's not news anymore. Okay, okay. So you 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 pretty much in certain cases damned if you do, damned if you don't. That's a great way to describe it. That is a <laughs> great way to describe it. In certain cases. In certain cases, we are damned either way. Either way. Yes. Okay. 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 I think we um I think we've kind of we got to get you back up here again. I you know I've had fun. I would love to. Did come you back. have fun? I did. I enjoyed myself. I, it was way more uh, laid back than I thought it was going to be. I was really I came in here prepared. I was like I'm going to get attacked from all sides. I had to pray about it, Lord. Just you know. Now, if if you would have gotten attacked by all sides, would you have been able to handle it? Of course, I would have just rolled with it. You know, it's part of the job. Yeah, I think I think the first caller, you know, you know, you we we talked before we went on air, and it was yeah. like, look, I don't want to do that. Yeah, I, I just want to. You know, I have people. I have heard people say that name before. I think that's very disrespectful. First of all, to call to call me something like that. You don't know me. First of all, right? Um, it's a it's a racial slur. It's derogatory. Why would you do that? So, yeah. And, and I've heard that before. I've heard from one or two people. And it really, you know, when I heard, heard it the first time, it bothered me. Now it's like, whatever. You know, that person probably didn't get a hug today. So. Cam, Cam, oh, Cameron Green, I lost his comment. He wanted to know, did you, I, I got to find his oh, comment. Okay. That's the uh, the Russian troll, right? <laughs> I'm surprised he hasn't called. He didn't call. He, he didn't. He did Cameron call. Green, he... He, he's, he did all that talking on so on Facebook. Ooh. That's what they usually do, Rob. They talk a lot on Facebook. Holy <laughs> but then when it's time to, you know, prove. Now, what you is know, a Russian troll? You know, well, those are the people that were uh, manning all those Facebook accounts back during uh, oh. the presidential election. Okay, okay, okay. So these are the people who allegedly helped uh, the president. Now, and, and Facebook got rid of a lot of those accounts recently. <laughs> and he didn't call. He did not call. Oh, I, guess, I was you know, I was I was expecting him to call too. You know, when you don't have a lot to say, I guess you don't say it. Aha! Uh-huh. Now, when you said Cameron, let's go ahead and clear this up before it goes left at your expense. Right. That wasn't you wasn't threatening him. You of were just not. saying you was going to give him that work. Yes. Uh, uh, the facts. The I gonna, facts. I was going to give him the facts, as opposed to fiction. As opposed to blocking him and just never hearing from him again. I was going really. I had time that day. You had time. I had the time. Oh, that's that hood talk. <laughs> and he did say he was from you from the hood. I am from the hood. Yeah. I had you had time that day. I, I grew up in a two bedroom section eight apartment. Okay. My mom and I. And the Carolinas. In North Carolina. Okay. Now it was Southern Hood, but it was hood. It was Southern Hood, but it was hood. Yes. Oh, it's still hood altogether. Yeah. I'm 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 very I, dis- I can't remember. I, I must have been, I don't know, nine or ten years old having to go next door and with a cup in hand, asking my neighbor, "Can I borrow have, a cup of I milk?" I have been down that road. You know, I have been down that road. Now, what made his comments stand out above the rest because of the you color? Know, I, I don't recall what exactly that. Con- Do you know what the? I forget what the he conversation said, was why, about. It's like you were when a girl's story about the corruption, about the embezzlement, or whatever. Allegedly, he said. Um, there's a pattern. Oh yes, of That's, targeting people of color. That is why I. Something snapped. Something, something snapped. Something snapped. Because I had been hearing that buzzing around social media and I had been ignoring it. And that was the first time somebody actually came on my page and said that on my page. That's why I went there with him. Okay. Yeah. If it was him saying it on his page, I would have never responded to it. But he came on my page. That was the last. I had had enough at that point. And, and, that, and for you, that's the furthest thing from the truth. It's absolutely not true. Yeah. Okay. And and as you see, I mean, you saw the, you saw how I broke that myth down. It was completely false what he said. Right. And what I did was I went to my social media and I re- did a screen record, scrolling right. through all of the stories I had done where you see me reporting on people of all races. Right. And I posted that there and tagged him in it so he could go back and take a look at his era. And did he apologize? And he did not actually. He did not. He did not. He did not apologize. But I wasn't looking for an apology because I, I didn't need his apology. I just wanted the facts to be out there. 
Okay, so your mission was accomplished. Mission accomplished, and no need to debate any further. Russian trolls. Yeah. Done. Completely done. And that day, <laughs> Mario said, "I had time. <laughs> I had time that day." I don't. He usually he calls in. He he usually calls in, but well, I, maybe, I I hope he's okay. Maybe. But he did say, "Yo, Rob, it's a good look. Mario's coming on. Yeah. Maybe let's we'll get this call. We're gonna get ready to wrap it up." Okay. Raw report. Talk to us. Hello. Okay, they're listening to the air. You're listening. You gotta turn your device down. And they hung up. It was restricted. <laughs> it was. It was him. It was him. Yeah. It was him. <laughs> him but he did say in his defense he did say you know what that's a good look the brothers coming and I, on. I appreciate that and and in fact i think it was him who suggested it wasn't it I, I don't know well i said i said to you after you came back with the at your own expense oh, then mario you, yes you invited me can on. i get you and, okay. and your celebrity status kicked in whether you want to accept <laughs> it or not they was like he's not coming on your little show and i was like no nah, i don't believe that i don't yeah. believe that yeah i don't believe that. i'm here it's really me and it's funny that I, I do Uber. Okay. Sometimes I do Uber most of the time. And the next day I saw you. But I was like, that was too creepy. Oh. You're like, hey, Mario, it's me. You know? Oh, okay. That would have been really creepy. Like, <laughs> yes. Hey, look, 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 look. And I had a password. But people do that all the time. So it's no big deal. I'm like, it's Rob. Rob Report. I want you. To... I just felt that was kind of creepy. Yeah. And you had, your, you had your hat and shit on, your gazelles. I was in, again, I was in t shirt and. Okay. You know, I, I would have spoke to you, though. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it, it just wouldn't. Have... The I speak. Fashion, to, I speak to everybody. Right. I speak to everybody who speaks to me. Right. 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 Always. So I was like, let me have some dialogue with him, on on um, on the phone. Let's talk. Yeah. Let's. He said he got to get it cleared, and once he get it cleared, and when you email me and was like, you know, I can come on. I told my wife. I said he's coming, and, and her mother. I don't know how she. Her mother was like, oh, I want to watch because I like Mario Boone. Yeah. She's you know she's an older woman older okay. you know how the older black women yeah. are you know yeah they, they the news is their thing yeah. So um, I, I just you know before I go I do want to close out with uh, I just want to let everybody at home. I know. knew he was going to have a close out. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I knew he was going to have a disclaimer. I, I want to let everybody at home know that uh, you know every single day I go on the news is it, it's to represent us to the very best of my ability. And when I say us, I mean us, my people. Um, only because when when you see me, you see a black man before you see anything else. So I never want to do anything to um, embarrass us or make us look bad. You know, I always want to be the utmost professional that I can be and, and look my very best. That's why I'm always in a suit and tie because I want to I want to represent us in the best way possible. Um, so I work really hard to do that, and, and that's all I'm trying to do every single day, you know? Right. Go ahead, caller. Hey Rob, this is girl again. Um, you never stated the number to call to tour the. Oh know? yes, yes. Uh, okay, so it's two zero three, seven eight four, eight 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 eight, and I think you hit zero to get through to the operator, and um, they can help you set up a tour. Okay, two zero three seven eight four eight 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 zero. Yeah. I'm sorry, eight no. eight eight eight. Yes. Extension zero. Yes, and then let me give yeah. you my email as well. If you have any problems, you can hit me up. It's uh, Mario. Okay. Mario. Rob, definitely inbox me that email. Abs please. Absolutely not. Okay. He's giving it to you right now. You <laughs> should have a pen and paper. You've been on the show. You was a host before. You should be adequate, ma'am, and have a pen and paper in hand to get a tour of the facility. <laughs> I have to talk to you I that way because. Right now, just. Um, what you will inbox me, Rob. Thank you. Love you. <laughs> okay. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me give my email anyway in case anybody wants to hit me up. If you got a story idea, if you know of some dirt you want to expose, Jesus. if you want to blow the whistle, <laughs> uh, the you know, if you want to drop a dime, whatever you want to do. <laughs> you, you know the blacks don't. Hold yeah. up. You know snitches. They, you know how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> you can hit me up. My email address is mario.boon, B-O-O-N-E, at WTNH.com. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and uh, Facebook at Mario Boom TV. Um, yeah, whatever you want to drop, whatever you want to expose or good news, whatever it is, you can hit me up and uh, we'll try to we'll try to cover it. So it's Mario dot Boone at WTNH.com. Yes. Okay. Okay. And I respond to all emails. I answer all phone calls. You answer all phone calls. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. All right.
Um, brother, it, it it was it was a pleasure. I've enjoyed myself. Uh, did like, you enjoy yourself? I did. Can I had, we can we get you back? I'll I'll come back. You will come back. I will. Now that we we've gotten through, because I was like, I, I at first I, I'm gonna keep it real. I was like, maybe he's gonna call me and say, can I bring some of my friends with me? I was like, yeah, that would have been fine. Yeah, that would have been cool. I don't know anybody in New Haven, so I wouldn't. You don't? I don't. No. You don't do the nightlife, just the scene. I, I don't. I've not been out in uh, New Haven. I've been to, actually I've been to one club, but that's it. I have not. I've driven down what is that college or one of those streets? College at, at night. I've driven, so you're not even familiar with the streets yet. Um, I know them when I'm driving around there. I, actually, I think it was. Uh, Gosh, I think it's College Street. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty busy. I've driven, I've driven down that street at night, and I—that's not my thing. I don't do that because um, I don't drink, so I don't like being around drunk people. You know, you don't like me. Okay. I don't. Okay, no. it's it's kind of annoying. So, uh, but you know, if, 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 hey, I, 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 I'm not opposed. I would go out if I had the time, or if I, you know, knew some people to hang out with down there. But I don't know anybody here. So, okay, okay, that, that, so okay. I, I literally I go to work, and I go home, and then on the weekends I'm out of here. You're out of here. Yeah. You're in New York? I'm in New York. I'm in Philly. Now, I'm what in part? Because I'm originally from New York. Harlem. Harlem. You're in Har- I lived yeah. in Harlem for okay. a long time. Yeah. My people so, are in Harlem. Harlem. They're in Harlem. Yes. Nice. Do you, you don't know exactly? Uh, I don't want to say. Right. Where. You can't. Right. Okay. Yeah, okay. I don't okay. want to say. But where. Harlem is, is. Harlem is Harlem. Harlem is Harlem. Yeah. Not the ha- same Harlem when I grew up. It's not. No, it's not. Same. I remember back in the day when I used to come up and go out and party back when the warehouse used to be the warehouse. You know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, okay. Um, it's not like that anymore. No. All right. Warehouse is in the Bronx, by the way, but it's not there anymore. It used to be on Grand Concourse in the Bronx. Right. So you okay? So you talk in New York? I'm all familiar right. with it. I used to come to New York all the time, and um, that was my weekend little party spot. That was back when there was uh, was it Value Jet and then Air Tram when they had those fifty dollar standby tickets. Right. You could just hop on a plane and go anywhere. Yeah. Everything has changed now. That's back when I used to do a lot of my traveling days everything. just to go clubbing. You know, we would fly up to New York City and go to clubbing and then fly back to college. Be wow. back in time for that's, classes. That's, that's college life. Mm-hmm. That's kind of, I missed that. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, college life is good. good. Yeah. Everybody, thank. We want to thank um, Mr. Boone for coming through. He came thank through. You. He came through and produced. Um, everybody, again, we, we put the number up there real quick so you can. Um, um, the tour to facility is 203 784 8888. And his email is mario.boone at wtnh.com. And again, the stories you'll you go th- it has to go through the process, right? And everything like that. Um, yeah, if you got video, you know, video is always great with stories. You know, if you got video of somebody, well, anything, and it's newsworthy, we'll take a look at it. If you got pictures, uh, facts, documents, all of that stuff, that's what we need to make a story. Okay. If we can back it up with some documentation, proof, video, text messages, you know, whatever. It's it's on. Yes, we'll do it. Okay, y'all, y'all, y'all heard it first from the man. He's come through to the Royal Report, Mario Boone. Thank you, sir. Yes, now I'm out of here to go hit up Popeyes because I'm starving. Popeyes is on. Is that's typical black man for you? <laughs> go to chicken, boy. Yo, we out of here, y'all. Thanks for watching. It's the Royal Report. We'll see you soon with some other stuff. Peace. We're gone.